Premium Bandai, good or bad? So welcome to our weekend show. A little bit of rambling and rant in this show especially. I'm not happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously Premium Bandai is available today in Japan, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Singapore, America and Canada. But, but of not course, in Malaysia. Not in Malaysia and a lot of different parts of the world. I'm right? actually a bit pissed because I like a lot of all the Premium Bandai kits that they produce. Yes, yeah. Obviously the name itself suggests you know, premium, right? It is meant to be expensive and exclusive. So I think this is a genius move by Bandai, you know, they just launched this a few years back. Um, no other toy brands such as Hasbro or even Majorette or you know the other Mattel brands have come up with a separate exclusive premium brand. A lot of people have been complaining about you know it's expensive and it's not necessary. There's a lot of um, you know, negative comments, but more than the positive ones. I agree. Um, obviously, because there's a lot of things I want to buy, but I can't get it well from Premium Bandai. Yes. So, end up, I also have to pay a big price for someone else to bring it in for us. But this is nothing new. I remember back in those days, um, during my comic collection time, right? Only certain uh, issues of the comics are available in US and you have to actually import them to be able to get hold of this. So it's, it's like I say, the concept of premium is not new. It has been in the market for a long, long, many years. It's just because Banda is big, getting, you know, there's the name. The name itself is, you know, everybody talks about it and it frustrates people because there's a lot of Gunpla collectors. Yeah. What about you guys, you know, for all you Gunpla collectors, SHF collectors, Garo collectors who have to buy things from the Premium Bandai shop and of course for those of you who are not within those available countries how do you feel paying the extra premium to the resellers in the stores to get it for you? Now, so let's start with the pros of Premium Bandai. Obviously, Premium Bandai, because of its exclusive nature, is able to create niche and expensive products. Only then, they can create something like, uh, you know, close to 40,000 yen, scroll of Ultraman and Baltan. That's actually art created by the artist itself. Right? Yeah. So for collectors who are really hardcore into Ultraman, for example, if it wasn't because of Premium Bandai, hey, you will never be able to get something like this. Another good example is this Zagok Claw, right? If it wasn't for Premium Bandai, hey, how am I going to get my soft cushion Zagok uh, Claw that I can also yes. use to punch my <laughs> colleagues in the office? This is the one I actually wanted. <laughs> yeah. So again, these are the pros of Premium Bandai, right? I mean, if it wasn't for Premium Bandai, they wouldn't be able to release something of a small number, product, limited production, mm -hmm. that high quality such as myself would want it. And of course, look at this, man. This is such a cute and adorable Kamen Rider one bear. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> right? So some collectors may say, oh, Crazy. what the fuck, man, right? But to some other people, hey, at 43,000 yen, this Kamen Rider bear is not cheap. But then again, there is a market for collectors out there. Yeah, crazy people. There are probably a lot of Kamen, hardcore Kamen Rider and hardcore teddy bear fans that wants this. I, I, I actually truly agree with you when you're actually buying something that is premium and so-called limited, uh, unique itself. Only a few people, handful of people who got all this, you feel a bit proud because that is your exclusive collection. Yeah, you're in an exclusive club. The yes. premium club. Everyone right? wants something exclusive for themselves. So I guess this is the good reason to buy it. Yes. Right. But the only thing that I'm not happy about is despite being exclusive and limited, right? They also still come up with reissues of kids that released few years back. Which is what I'm kind of pissed as well, right? Like the Phoenix that we saw earlier, mm -hmm. they just they are planning to reissue this again in January 2018. Yeah. No. So, not only this. Talking about the reissues, right? What about the F ninety one? The yes, the F ninety one. They just reissue in the Harrison colors. 
which I think looks so much better than the white color of the original F ninety one. Why still, premium? <laughs> yeah, why it shouldn't be premium, right? That's exactly why we are talking about this video, right? And the um, thing is already expensive, and you want to come up with a premium <laughs> version, <laughs> right? And even like these are the main characters from um, Kamen Rider Amazon season two. Yeah. Shit, man, why are these premium? They, these are the main they, characters. These are they not. know you will you will, you will buy it because. Die Hard fans will get it. Yeah. So I will actually get that if Premium Bandai release things that is, uh, you know, yeah. like a side story or something that's new, but you don't take all the main characters and put it into Premium Bandai, right? Yeah, these are all the unnecessary moves, man. Yeah. One of the things I hate is about shipping free f a third party. Yeah, especially for us who are countries that don't have premium bandai. Yes, uh, there's of course uh, third party websites will help you to ship uh, when you buy this thing from Japan or premium bandai site and then you have to pay an addition of premium price and also waiting for the shipping is actually painstaking. Yeah, and some of these resellers actually take upfront deposits which yes. is uh, not a small amount as well mm -hmm. and, uh, and you wouldn't know that whether the thing will arrive to you in safe hands you know things could get lost and or damaged and that is like true that. right i mean obviously for those of you who have ordered through a reseller there's always a risk that this guy might go bust obviously right so yeah, there's always true. that uh, the risk as well I think I can talk about a bit about the pro about premium Bandai where all this so-called limited or exclusive stuff has their own reason because with limited runs they can do a test market about these products. I myself is a product designer so in order to avoid mass production that you don't know whether this product will work out, it will be successful or not. So what I do is actually I will do limited runs with higher costs because of the molds and also called the materials uh, because limited runs you need to buy a um, small amount of materials which is much more expensive yeah. yeah so is that how the designer industry designer toy industry works they, they come up with some small runs and then they say hey you know the demand is not too bad let me have a second batch that comes out yes one of those concepts are those days that you have to for you to produce a plastic product you actually have to come out the money to fork out the money to actually create a mold yeah right and then produce it in a limited quantity which is very expensive but lucky enough nowadays there are 3d printers yeah so pretty 3d printers are able to produce like prototypes so these prototypes are like for you to show the client that if they agree then they will actually pump in the money to produce that yeah that's a very good point right mm -hmm. but still coming back now to the cons uh, and i do agree with you big pain I think having premium Bandai is a great idea but not making it available in most of the countries that are looking for the products is a major, you know. And overdoing it with unnecessary products, you know, and reissues, uh, those are the bad moves. <laughs> yeah, so that is the one thing that really pissed me off, right? I mean, all the main characters, the final form like Garo, final form of uh, Amazon, they put yes. it into premium Bandai and you have to buy from premium Bandai. So those things doesn't really make it make any sense to me you right? can sell it as a separate more exclusive kit rather than the whole uh, figure is premium one right? yeah because as collectors you have to deal with the regular releases you have to deal with the expo limited editions yes. and you have to also deal with premium bandai releases so that's as a collector you actually have a lot of things that you need to watch out for unfortunately right uh, the thing that i'm not very happy about of course it's the reissues, uh, as I mentioned earlier, so that is one thing that I'm not really happy about, right? If I'm gonna pay a premium to premium Bandai, whether it's it direct or through a reseller, fuck man, don't do another run because that's where's the exclusivity. I don't have the you know proud moment where I'm the only guy in the market that has yeah. the exclusive. People will be like, I won't buy it first. I will wait for the reissue, you know, and wait and see what's happening in the market. So this is really um, like I say, not good move for reissues. Yeah. So what about you collectors, you know, um, have you guys been through the same conundrum as us? Have you actually bought something from 
Premium Bandai through a third party? Um, have you had so many kids that you wanted and they're all from Premium Bandai? Tell us something good as well, you know, for those of you who collect Premium Bandai, you know, as you just let us know what are the good points and also do share with us what is your pain. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously for those resellers who are bringing in the Premium Bandai stuff to resell, they are obviously very happy because they have a lot of high margin products to sell. Yeah. I'm assuming, I'm assuming. <laughs> Alright, leave All right. a comment. That, that's our weekend show. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment and again, be nice in the comment section, please. <laughs>